Our preaching thing for this year is the joy of the Lord. And joy is that, that positive experience and expression that God is. God is present in our lives. And so the joy of the Lord. That joy is often reflected in what we might call celebration and gladness. Uh, when you have joy, it's that kind of expressive thing that just cannot be hidden. It's, it's there and folk know it's there. Joy then isn't though just mere emotional feeling or a uh, physiological reaction to some stimuli. Joy has as its base the assurance to know that God is. Yeah. And whatever God has said, it shall come to pass. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Believe us all the Lord, in the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Joy, our joy, is not subject to the vicissitudes of life. Yeah. Life, life has its struggles, yeah. it has its challenges, yeah. and yet uh, we have studied in our first three lessons joy we saw in John 16 and Jesus told the disciples to be of good cheer or have joy because he has overcome the world. Amen. So whatever we are going through know that Christ has already overcome. Amen. And if we stay with the Lord it's going to be alright. Amen. Right? Amen. It's going to be all right. We saw in John 17 that Jesus prayed to the Father that the joy that he had given unto his Father was would be filled, it would be fulfilled in them. And so Christ wants us to have fullness of joy. Amen. And then we Amen. saw in the third lesson in John 16 that uh, no man can take it your joy. No man. It belongs to you. Amen. It's Amen. titled to you. Yes. Yes. So again, we don't let not just the vicissitudes of life, but we don't let people take our joy. Amen. 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 We're building. God is building us. Yes. And so today, uh, and because God is building us, uh, today is the next step in the building process. All right. Yes. And so it won't take long because it just builds on what we've already been given. And that is, Christ has overcome, that he wants us to have fullness of joy, and that we should not let anyone take our joy. Amen. Amen. Galatians, in chapter 5, I'll just read one verse, the verse of highlight, or two verses, the verse of highlight for us, uh, verse 22 and 23. Uh, Paul writes and says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Let me read verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Verse 25. And we live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. In the church. Amen. 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 Paul and writing to the uh, Galatians, the church, uh, the churches that are located in the area uh, that is called Galatia. Uh, Paul had gone out and preached, and as a result of the preaching, uh, there were people who accepted uh, the call of Christ upon their lives, and they became Christians. Uh, some were Jews, some were Gentiles. Uh, one of the things that, as a growing process then, that the, the Jews who became Christians had to grow to understand, and that was that God saved both the Jew and the Gentile, but that the Gentiles were not obligated to have to follow the, uh, the laws that the Jews had followed in the Old Testament dispensation or uh, during the time of uh, their walking with the Lord under the first covenant. Mm -hmm. Because now Christ has created the new covenant. Amen. And so the scripture says this, uh, when you're in Christ, uh, you become a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. So one of the problems, though, is that there were some people who were trying to teach uh, the believers in Galatia. After Paul has gone on to other uh, places to preach the gospel, 
Uh, there were some who then came into the area of Galatia and suggested to the Gentiles that they needed to be followers of the law. Well, Paul writes to address and reinforce that salvation is of Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Salvation is of Christ and Christ alone. Salvation is Jesus, yeah. full stop. Amen. Period. Amen. Nothing else to add. Yeah. Salvation is of Jesus Christ. There's nothing else that has to be added in order for them to be saved. And so there were some who uh, were of the Jewish background who felt that they, they still needed to be a strict adherence and following of the law uh, of the Old Testament. Well, Paul writes, and he confirms this about the law. In Galatians, you'll find when you read the, the book in its entirety, Paul writes and, and confirms this about the law. He said, now, first of all, there was faith before there was the law. And he points to Abraham to prove this point. He said, now Abraham came to God by faith. Amen. There was no written law. There was not the Mosaic law in place when God called Abraham. The Bible said that Abraham, by faith, replied to the call of God. And so faith has always preceded the law. Amen. Then he expresses the fact that the law demonstrates God's absolute holiness. Because in the law, you have to keep every part perfectly in the law in order for one to stand before God and claim to be right. Well, we know that's not, not possible, don't we? We know that's not possible, don't we? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know that that's not possible. But the law establishes the standard that here's what God expects of you. Amen. And so the law required absolute and perfect adherence. And so conversely, the law shows us how much we need God. Amen. The law really shows us how sin trips us up so much that we really do need the Lord to be merciful and gracious. You don't always go to God for justice because justice is establishing that you get what you deserve. And all of us deserve death, but because of Jesus Christ, we have life. When you go to God, go to God and say, thank you, Lord. tells them, now don't let anybody trip you up that after you have come to Christ they cause you now to think that you can keep the law. Because can I, can I get a witness in here that we've had to go to the Lord and pray since we've been saved? I'm on my way home, y'all. Since you and I have been saved, you have had a occasion to go some places we shouldn't have gone. Yeah. Say some things. Yes, shouldn't have said. Yeah. Thought some thoughts. Yeah. That didn't nobody else know them now. Yeah. But within yourself, you have to say, Lord, have mercy. Where did that come from? Yeah. It is by the grace and mercy of God, yeah. not our keeping of the law. And so Paul said, the law shows us just how much we need the law. Yeah. 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 You and I, we need the Lord. The law expresses God's holiness. It must be kept perfectly. But then here's what he said. Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free from the law. Not to be lost. All right. Stay with me. Some folk that read and they read it from a carnal standpoint think that, well, not if there is no law, I can do what I want to. Y'all walking with me? Act like I want to act. Because Christ has set me free from the law. No more 
Lord do I have to deal with it? Thou shalt not. Yes, sir. Amen. So I'm free from the law. Amen. What Paul says is that Christ has made you free from the law. Not to be lawless, but now to be led of the Spirit of Christ. So then, it don't have to be a law written on a piece of paper, but because the Spirit dwells in the believer, the Spirit will tell you when you are. to justify their wrongdoing by God's word. They'll go find a scripture, take it out of context, and then act like they are right. But the Holy Spirit will convince the believer that when you are wrong, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and tell you how to lie. Amen. Now, Paul said now to the Galatians, he said now, don't let anybody get you all mixed up uh, about that, uh, the law. While you do not have to keep, because you can't keep it in your flesh, mm -hmm. the written law, yet Christ has set us free that now the Holy Spirit guides us. Amen. Remember this, over at Matthew, Jesus said this, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Many people then take that promise and they stop right there. But Jesus kept talking. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yes, sir. You know the yoke, uh, the yoke controls the beast that's going out to do the work. Amen. Jesus said, now you got to have some control. Y'all welcome to the name church. Christians can't be the, the loudest, most reckless, the most lawless person in the room. Yeah. Not if you follow Christ, not if you read God's word, and not if you're led of the Holy Spirit. God will control you and tell you when you're wrong. Let me hurry on and close. So, by the time we get to chapter 5, Paul is talking about the fact that now stand fast in the liberty where Christ has set you free and don't be coming uh, entangled uh, into bondage again. So now, there are some things that we may have done out of tradition that when Christ sets us free, don't mean it was a wrong thing, but it means that we are no longer bound to have to do that. Amen. So for example, tradition, you eat turkey on Thanksgiving. Right. But you know what, it's all right to not eat turkey on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that simple, y'all. But you know there are some folk that if they don't have the turkey and the cranberry sauce and the dressing at Thanksgiving, something wrong?
could happen to those who walk in the flesh. But now, he contrasts and says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no love. And so now, he shows us that with the Holy Spirit, uh, now there's some uh, commentators and scholars, they look at it and they see uh, each one of these attributes as separate and single. The love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. They see them as separate things that the Holy Spirit produces in the life of the believer. Mm -hmm. I prefer to look at it from this perspective, church. It's the same Holy Spirit. So it's the one food that gives us all this nutrition. Yes. Yes. When you start to think of it in terms of separate and single, there are some folk who want the love, but they don't want the long suffering. Right. When, when, when the thing goes south on them, and, and now they got to suffer, and now they got to sacrifice, now they got to be afflicted, they don't want any part of that. But if you want part of the love and the joy, So now, this is what the Holy Spirit produces in the life of the believer. Amen. Amen. So that we are not deficient All right. in any nutrient that we need. Amen. Amen. All right. uh, some uh, people have conditions where they have certain deficiencies. All right. uh, so then you may have to eat bananas. Because right. you don't get, you know, the normal vitamin in your daily potassium. Yeah, potassium. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> potassium. So you eat the bananas. Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit produces the potassium yeah. in your life. Yeah. You don't have to go hunting for a separate banana. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, it produces yeah. the potassium yeah. and all those other vitamins and nutrients uh -huh. yeah. because it's one Holy Spirit, it's yeah. one food that we need in our lives yeah. if we're going to have healthy life. Yeah. Healthy spiritual life yeah. means letting the Holy Spirit give us the nutrition that we need. Yeah. Not only does the Holy Spirit provide the nutrition, and there's no deficiency, but there's also no side effects. Right. Amen. 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 I was I get in trouble. I know that modern medicine is good, yes, and, and we have to have it, but some of the side effects cause me to wonder. Looking out for each other. 
looking out for one another yeah. and, and talking to one another. Yeah. Yeah. On the other end of that street, our street, <laughs> on the other end, they look like they barely talk to each other. And when they do, it's kind of they, they, they're really at each other as opposed to good morning, how are you? Good to see you today. And my neighbor, when he's watering his grass, he don't find that a little bit of hill water come over and water my grass. <laughs> Amen. You know, there are some people, they'll, they'll fix that thing just so. <laughs> and sad to say, sometimes they have to do it that way because of their neighbor they did it. Uh -huh. But where we live, there, there's like, there's community. I told my neighbor, uh, I said, I'm, I'm going to go down to the city council and uh, offer that they'll rename this little circle, this little cul-de-sac that we live in uh, with your last name. And he said, no, oh, you didn't. I said, well, yeah, because here's what he does. If the trash man comes along and dumps trash and, and don't uh, pick it, he'll go and pick it up even if it's not his trash. Amen. So we going we our little circle of people. If, if, uh, if I let the yard go just a little bit and he think it he need a little edge, I'll be sitting there and watch the TV and I'll hear, hear a little. He'll <laughs> 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 the edge of the yard. I have to get up and go cut the yard. <laughs> and he had to come over there and do that. But what it shows is that there's a connection. When I, when I read the scripture, I thought about that community then of how Paul shows us love, peace, joy, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, they all live in the same community. And they all help one another. Love helps peace. Peace helps joy. Joy helps. You get what I'm saying, church? They don't live in isolation from one another, but they live together in a community where and you got some joy and some love, it ought to help you be deep and gentle when you got to deal with other people. Hey, hey. Joy of the Lord. And that last part was temperance. Self-control. Self-control. And that's very important, church. That as believers, that we understand that what the Holy Spirit produces in our lives it's not just the love and the joy, the peace, the long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, but that temperance also. And you know what? It can be a joy to know that when you would have reacted in one way, that you held your peace. It's a joy. Yeah. Go to the shop. Yeah. 